City Pop. It makes me reminisce on things that never happened. It takes me to a place where only I and the things I could ever dream of exist. A distinct sense of nostalgia, escapism, and comfort. City pop is a loosely defined style of Japanese pop music that emerged in the late 1970s and peaked in popularity in Japan during the 1980s. In the Japanese music industry, city pop was not a major genre, however because of its refined sound creation, western style melodies and chord progressions, and a big city vibe that differed greatly from existing Japanese popular music styles, it gradually gained popularity among trendy young people. Along with the growth of this genre, it would highlight some of Japan's greatest musical talents. It would eventually make its way to its present day revival in the West, mainly through TikTok. This is the rise of City Pop, along with one of its most prevalent mysteries regarding Meiko Nakahara. Japanese pop would probably never be complete without the mention of the name Meiko Nakahara, or at least one of her songs. The singer and composer has often been described as one who brought about the golden age of City Pop. The arrival of city pop in the 80s can be linked to the economic boom after the Second World War that made Japan the world's second largest economy at the time. Despite the fact that Japan has the world's second largest music industry, which would be unexpected for a country with the third highest GDP and a population of 125 million, it remains one of the most misunderstood and difficult local industries. One reason for this is that Japan is considerably different from Western markets due to its distinct cultural patterns and their impact on market structure. It's one of the fundamental reasons Japanese musicians and the Japanese music industry can basically disregard the rest of the world and prosper mostly or completely on their home turf. South Korea, on the other hand, has a significantly smaller domestic music market, and K-pop singers, in general, focus much more on global markets than J-pop artists do. Nakahara Meiko was born Kohara Akiko on May 8, 1959 in Yotsukaido, Japan. She had a passion for music since she was a young child, and when she was old enough she made a choice that would shape her destiny. Her parents reportedly owned a fuel station, and her father encouraged her to finish her education. After falling in love with music, she would decide to drop out of traditional schooling. She decided to study music at a speciality music school, run by vocalist Suzuki Kanihiko. Nakahara began by playing several instruments until she felt comfortable enough with her voice to begin singing. When she was 15, she entered a music competition in Japan. She would eventually follow her singing career and quickly became a household name in Japanese pop. After completing her studies at the school, she briefly appeared in TV programs. However, she began her career as a backup vocalist for other artists before pursuing her dream of becoming a singer. Nakahara's first song, Konya Dake Dance Dance Dance, was released in 1982. This, however, was not the song that made her famous. The singer, like many famous musicians, had to wait two years before receiving any sort of recognition. When Nakahara was eventually taken in by the label Toshiba Emi in 1982, she was dubbed the second Yumin because her voice was nearly identical to that of the famous singer. Their voices have often been described as low and distinctive. When she launched the song Kimitachi Koi Papaya Mangoden, she finally earned much needed recognition. The song became so famous that it was named one of the top 50 best-selling singles in Japan in 1984. Kanebo, a Japanese beauty company, would then make use of her mature image and adopt the song for their advertisements for their beauty products. Nakahara would also indulge in anime culture. She would perform Roro Ro Rashi no Ro Reto for the opening music of a 1985 anime series called Dirty Pair. Her song Space Fantasy was also used in the series' closing theme. In addition to these, she would create two songs for the anime Kimagori Orange Road. Nakahara would eventually build a pristine image in city pop culture. 
However, after eight years and over a hundred songs to her name, Nakahara vanished into thin air. She released her final song in 1991 and went on her final live tour in 1992. One question would be on everyone's mind, what happened to Meko Nakahara? Many internet enthusiasts had scoured the internet looking for answers to this bizarre disappearance. Here is some information I was able to find online. Keep in mind, not all of this information is extremely credible at times. Nakahara is supposed to have lived in New York after 1991. She was still performing in concerts at this point, and she continued to do so after her last album in 1991, all the way up to her retirement as a vocalist in 1992. She then returned to Tokyo to work behind the scenes on a music production project. Nakahara's last official submission was a composition in 1999 for a song by a Japanese idol group. A cover singer of Nakahara's also stated they met her family at their performance and learnt she is indeed living in Tokyo, but take this with a grain of salt as it hasn't been certified. One theory is that Nakahara is still involved with music under another alias or is deliberately uncredited, which is not uncommon, especially for singers who want anonymity like Meiko. Others would believe that she likely helps her parents run their fuel shop business or runs it herself now. Another possibility is that she married and left the music scene in the past. I believe getting married could be a good starting point as there have been reports of female singers being concerned about marrying during this time period because their husbands would frequently want them to retire once they married. Along with the disappearance of a famous celebrity come with some darker theories that would submerge. There were numerous rumours that Nakahara died in her late 40s in the New York suburbs, but these turned out to be uncreditable 2chan rumours that were never confirmed. Nakahara will be remembered by her fans as the woman for all seasons. Not just a J-pop idol or passing starlet, but a true artist who was not afraid of mixing synth-pop vibes with bossa nova, jazz, disco and funk. Nowadays one can enjoy Mako's unforgettable hits either online or through physical media. We cannot also forget about Mako's aesthetic-filled music videos and live performances which still can be accessed on YouTube. So, is there still hope that we may find out what happened to the great Mako Nakahara? Who knows? Thank you for watching my YouTube video. There will be references in the description and please do let me know what you think about the disappearance of Nakahara. And remember to drop a like and subscribe to my channel for more Japanese content and mysteries.